Hey everybody, it's Eric O'Rourke, and in this video, we're going to try to answer the question, is there a best day of the week for trading a seven day to expiration put credit spread on SPX? And as it turns out, there actually is. So in this video, we're going to break down the results of the alphacrunching.com's weekly triumph rate, also known as the WTR. We're going to break down their 7DTE PCS or put credit spread strategy into the individual days of the week so we can see which day is best or which Days are best, so you can be the most capital efficient with your money to grow your account and protect your capital. Now, if you're new to the alpha crunching strategy, don't worry, at the end of this video, after we go through the results, I'm gonna go through the exact strategy. So at the end, you'll know how to trade this by the time you walk away from this video. So let's go ahead and dive into the results of the strategy and find out which day of the week is best for trading an SPX put credit spread with seven days to expiration. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is look at trading all the days of the week for this strategy together. This was a study I put out uh, maybe a month or two ago, and it covers the time frame from January 1st, 2023 through June 28, 2024. So it's about a year and a half. And this doesn't look at um, any particular day. It's just any day that the setup was there, it took the trade, held the expiration, and these were ultimately the results. And so if we just take a look at a couple stats that I like to look at. These are the things that help me decide if I really wanna trade something or not. And I think overall it's tradable on all days. However, we're gonna find which days are best here in a minute. But overall we we ran a 70, almost a 72% win rate for this strategy, selling an at the money put credit spread with seven days to expiration whenever the setup was available for any of the days of the week. And a couple of keys to the strategy is trying to keep our risk reward in, in check. And typically with, with credit spreads, you're risking a little bit more to make less. But with this strategy, we're doing at the money. So our risk reward is three to two, which is much better than a lot of um, out of the money credit spread strategies. It's basically at the money. So our average loser here is $285. Why is that? Well, we are selling a five wide credit spread and we're trying to get a credit of at least $2. And so if you do get a credit of $2, that's your max gain and $3 would be your, your max loss because that's the width of the spread, in this case, $5 minus that $2 credit. So we're risking three to make two at the worst. That's kind of our goal. The expectancy how much is basically how much we made per trade, trading one contract at a time. And the expectancy for, let's call it $300 of risk, it's a little bit less, was $70. So this is pretty good for risking uh, 300 and making 70 over 188 trades over the last uh, you know year and a half or so. Again, 71, 72% win rate with our risk reward being just, just better than three to two. So what we're gonna do now is look at this exact same strategy, but we're gonna look at the trades only taken on Monday and then Tuesday, then each day of the week. So I kind of want you to try to remember these stats, right? So let's call it 72% with an expectancy of $70 uh, dollars here and 188 trades. So let's look at Monday. These are the results for the exact same strategy, but only for Monday. And we can see the win rate actually went up. We're closer to, we're 77%. Our expectancy went up to $98 per trade. This is really high. And we had a total of 31 trades. So not a ton of trades because we're only trading one day per, per week, but look at this P&L curve, very smooth. And when the conditions for the strategy aren't met, we simply don't trade. This is gonna keep us out of market volatility and we're gonna be uh, looking to be in cash for this strategy until the setup resumes. And again, we'll go through that setup here towards the end of the video. So re let's remember these numbers, 78%, $98 expectancy. If we go to Tuesday, a little bit less, but it's still pretty good, 73% with a $76 um expectancy but we had 41 trades so this is a little bit uh more a higher frequency i should say than monday so even though um these res these results were trading three contracts per trade but for the monday trade we only had 31 trades we made just over nine thousand. and for the tuesday trade there were 41 trades and we made just over nine thousand. so the frequency of trades is something we want to consider. So even if you have the best one that makes the most money, if you have a low frequency, it doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money. So you still want to factor in how many trades you want to do and how many trade trades you could actually handle. So let's move on and go ahead and look at Wednesday. And Wednesday was probably, I think, the worst day. 
65% um, win rate, which is still isn't horrible. It still made money, had 41 trades, but the expectancy just got cut in half, basically. And the money almost got cut in half as well. So the PL curve, it still goes from the bottom left to the upper right, but it's a very choppy path. And this is one of those decisions you might want to make. And, and I want to kind of frame this in the, the context of how much risk you want to have on. So let's just say you're risking $300 per trade. Well, with a seven-day strategy, if you open a trade on Monday, you're going to have $300 of risk. Well, if you open up a new trade on Tuesday, you're adding another $300 of risk because these trades you have to hold the entire seven days. So as you go throughout the week and you add, let's say it was a you know bullish week or whatever, you're going to ultimately end up with five trades. And if the market turns down, you'll have $1,500 of risk if you're doing one per uh, one spread per trade. And that may be more than you want to risk. So what we're trying to do here is give you the best days that you can really be capital efficient. And so when the losers do come, you're not fully, you know, you don't have your entire account or whatever. Obviously, risk tolerance and those things play a factor and everyone's different. But hopefully this will show you which days were the best performers so that you can allocate your capital more efficiently according to how you see fit. So let's go ahead and move on to Thursday. Thursday had a pretty good expectancy of $86. It actually made the most money, over 10000 and had 40 trades. So if there was one day per week, let's say you only wanted to risk $300 a week, Thursday would probably be your best day. It had the most frequency, a decent win rate, and one of the higher expectancy. It actually made the most money trading three contracts here. And lastly, we'll look at Friday. Um, not as good as the other days, better than Wednesday, but I would say Friday's probably in fourth place if you were to put the each day of the week in place. 70% win rate, it's livable. $61 um, expectancy. So if you're risking 300 and you're making 60, that's a 20% expectancy on your risk. That's still pretty good. 37 trades. p &L curve, I think looks pretty decent. Um, is it the best one? I would still put it in fourth place simply because the amount of money is just not there. It just didn't make as much. So again, the top three days, I would say, if you wanted to focus on the top three days, would probably be Monday was really the best expectancy, but it had the least amount of trades, the, probably the best PL curve, I think. Um, Tuesday and Thursday, those are probably your best days if you were looking to allocate money to a seven-day put credit spread strategy, taking three trades per week. So if you, if you do get three trades set up, um, the most you'd be risking for that particular week would be $900. That would be sort of your base unit for that. So now that we have an idea of the best days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, maybe Thursday's number one, let's walk through the actual strategy so you can understand how to trade this so you can walk away with something here. So the first thing that this strategy does is it looks at the weekly triumph rate from alphacrunching.com. So before the trading week begins, you get an idea when you look at this, which days of the week are candidates for trading the seven day put credit spread. So what we're looking for is if we go, if we, after you log in, um, if you go to WTR data, that's where you'll see the weekly triumph rate. And what this is, is telling us at the rate at which the market tends to close higher seven days later for each day of the week. So I'm doing this video on August 11th and the data for the week of eight, uh, August 12th is out. So before the trading week begins, we can look at which days are the days we want to trade. The first criteria to be met for the strategy is we want the WTR to be at least 50%. What does that mean? Well, if we look at Monday 8-12 and we have a WTR rate of 56%, that means that over the last couple of months, Monday has closed higher the following Monday or seven days later, the weekly triumph rate. Uh, 56% of the time. So it's about a coin flip, right? Not that great. Tuesday, also 56% of the time. Wednesday has only closed higher 40% of the time. That's telling you that 60% of the time, Wednesday has closed lower one week later. We're comparing the close to close. Thursday was 57% and Friday was 44%. So for this particular week, the only days we would even consider are, guess what? Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, because they're the only ones that are above 50%. And this is partly why I did this video, because when we go back to, 
to backtest the days, we find out that Monday, Tuesday, Thursday were really the best days and Wednesday and Friday were the weakest. So there's something in here that's telling us which days are the best days. So if you wanna look at the historical table of all the WTRs, you can. Here's this week and we can see that the rates start to increase and decrease over time. But for this strategy, we're keeping it relatively simple. The first thing you do before the week begins, you log into Alpha Crunching and look at the WTR and find out which days are above 50%. And this week, it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. That's the first criteria. Once the trading week begins, we're going to look at the chart of SPX. And what we want to do, since this is a put credit spread strategy, and we're trading right at the money, that's how we're getting that big credit. And because it's a uh, put credit spread strategy, it is bullish. So we want the market to be in a bullish mode or have bullish conditions. And the way we're going to measure that in real time is by using two simple moving averages. I'm using the SMA 10 or the five day simple moving average here in yellow and the 10 day simple moving average here in blue. And in general, if you're not familiar with moving averages, most people are. The shorter moving averages are going to be higher in bullish conditions. And when the market starts to turn lower, the shorter one is going to turn lower uh, and going to be leading the way down, if you will. If we look at um, this chart of SPX, the five day SMA crossed down below the 10 day SMA on Friday, July 19th at the close. We're, we're looking at this as kind of an end of day trade. So at that point, even if the WTR was saying it was 60, 70 percent, because the, because the moving averages have turned down are, are now flashing sort of a bearish sign, we're not taking the trade. We need two things in order to take this trade. We need the WTR to be above 50 percent and we need the five to be above the 10 SMA at the time of that trade. So right now, the, we're not taking this trade. And this goes back to let's go back to one of these uh, back tests. We can see these periods of flatline, and this strategy is designed to keep you out of that market volatility. So in this particular period of time, there was no trade. So you're sitting in cash just for the strategy. It doesn't mean you can't trade something else, obviously, if you want to trade the downside. But in this particular strategy, it keeps you out of the downside, keeps your bullish trade out of the downside. And it does that by making sure the moving averages are uh, in the right direction along with the WTR. So as of right now, there are no trades. Now, I know we said this week we'd be looking at Monday, Tuesday, fr uh, Thursday because we're above 50%. But what we would need is the market to continue to rally and this 5 SMA to pull back up. I don't know that it's going to get there this week, but you know we'll see what happens, right? Now, let's quickly talk about the strike selection. Let's go back to uh, this particular trade. This is Thursday and, and all those... Um, Strike selection is the same. We're basically selling a put with seven days to expiration that's just out of the money. It's just, this tends to be right at the money. It can actually be a little bit in the money, but the, what you're really trying to do here is get a credit of about $2. If you can get somewhere between $2 and $2.25, you're, you're in the right place. And so once the trade is open, we're opening this trade in the last 30 minutes of the day, uh, for that particular day and getting in that trade with a minimum of $2 credit. And then this, this version just holds it to expiration. I found that if you try to take profits early, you can increase your win rate, but you typically you reduce your overall P and L and holding expiration as hard as it is, it is, which it is, it's a lot harder than you think is actually the best. Uh, it was the most capital efficient here. So, and that's kind of what we're focused on. So again, if the conditions are met, the WTR is 50% or above. And on this particular Monday, let's say tomorrow, August 12th, here, this is August 9th. So if tomorrow, if the five were to curl back up, we would take the trade. I don't think it is. It needs a lot more work to get that moving average back up, but that's basically how it works. And we're selling an at the money put credit spread with seven days to expiration, holding the expiration and waiting for the next setup. So to wrap it up, for those that are familiar with the strategy already, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday were really the best performers, uh, Thursday probably being number one. And I hope that helps you, know, helps you determine which trades might be right for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Reach out to me over at Alpha Crunching or on Twitter, and we'll see you in the next video.